Yeah, fourth is like the worst, <laughs> worst place in cycling. I mean, it just doesn't, it's not good for anything. You know, it's like not a podium, you're up there, but you didn't, you didn't do really do anything, so. I, I love that quote. Fourth is the worst, says Idaho's best pro cyclist. I love it. And we've shared that sentiment a couple of times from Boise's Matteo Jorgensen. The first time was last summer when he was reflecting on his performance in his first Tour de, Tour de France, in which he ended up 21st out of 176 riders who started the three-week race, with two fourth-place stage finishes, by the way. He told us then he felt inspired for what's ahead. And coming off his self-titled best spring ever this past spring, he had high hopes for his performance in his second race around the French countryside. Okay, so the first few stages, Matteo wasn't exactly making much of a mark with finishes from 159th to 22nd to 132nd in stage eight. Then came stage nine, Sunday, yesterday, the 182 kilometer Puy de Dome stage. The first time the tour has taken to this mountaintop finish since 1988. Matteo would choose this climb to make his move. Huge advantage for the breakaway. The push for a potential podium began with about 50 kilometers to go. Matteo Jorgensen now has made his move. Big wow. move off the front by the rider from Boise, Idaho on the Spanish Movistar squad. This is a fantastic move by Matteo. Must have the good legs today. And Matteo did have the good legs going, at least for a little while. I think he has to go early to get a little bit of a time gap, but it's a brave move. Matteo told Cycling News he knew he needed a big lead before reaching the climb up the Puy de Dome. It wasn't really in the plan to go in the break, he said, but I found myself there, and then you kind of have to look around and make a plan on the fly. Matteo Jorgensen could be trying to steal the stage right now. And the 24-year-old would hold that lead. And this is Jorgensen riding like an inspired man today. He For the next 49 and a half kilometers. The way Matteo's riding, I he don't looks think great. they're going to be able to get back across to Matteo Jorgensen. He does look great. Because, of He's course came the curse of the overconfident announcer. And Michael Wood's about to catch everybody except my, my, Matteo Jorgensen. Then as Matteo was just about a clip from his first stage win in his second Tour de France. He is now 1.1 kilometers from the finishing line. Surely he won't be destroyed. Well, surely you can see the foreshadowing happening here. And surely you can see Michael Woods from Canada right back there. We can, and don't call me surely. How much is left? Does he know just how close uh, Woods is right behind him there? Well, no, because without any fans allowed along the narrow road, Matteo had no idea. And now look at this as he comes up on his back. After the race, he explained it like this. As we climbed the mountain, my radio stopped working. So the only time gaps I got were from the motorbike. He was telling me a minute then 40 seconds, and then 35 seconds. That was the last one I got with one kilometer to go. So with about a third of a mile to go, about the distance from Front Street to the Capitol Steps, if it were a crushing uphill climb. Still a chance for Mateo, 500 meters to go. What an absolute unbelievable ride he's going. Mateo, can he lift it? I don't think he can. Mateo said, I started to feel empty. And then before I knew it, Mike was there and passing me. It was a surprise, but there was absolutely nothing I could do. Still, there was a first time podium celebration in Mateo's sights. However, two more riders and heartbreak would catch Mateo once again, mere feet from the gravel finish. And finally, just a little bit, half a kilometer too far for Mateo Jorgensen. I think he's going to be denied even a podium there on the line by Mohoric. He is fourth place, but what a ride by Jurgensen. Man, fourth by one second. Fourth for the third time in the Tour de France, in his second Tour de France, by the way. Matteo told Cycling News as he was getting on the Movistar team bus, I'm proud of what I did. At the end of the day, it didn't pay off, but it will one day. Well, today is a rest day for riders, much deserved after that 14% climb from yesterday. That was a straight uphill climb. So maybe that one day will pay off for Mateo in the tour's 12 remaining stages.